Over the last couple of years, we've talked about soybean fungicides and how not a lot of farmers are using fungicides in soybeans, but how it typically provides a very good return on investment. I was just looking at the beans in this field. There are a few beans left on the ground after harvest, and, and they just look great. They're plump, they're clean, there's no bleeding hilums or, or speckles on them, no disease issues. And I thought, you know, this is one of the benefits that we're seeing on our farm. By using a fungicide, by treating for insects in a timely manner, it makes a big difference. But choosing the right fungicide is a bigger deal than we even thought. Well, it's just that normally we have fungicides like Headline, Quilt, and Stratego controlling all the typical diseases that we have around here. This year, however, we had the right conditions for white mold, and it was the first time on our farm that we had seen very much white mold in probably 10 years. Now, when you go out with Headline, Stratego, and Quilt, it's gonna do an excellent job on many different diseases, but unfortunately, it doesn't do anything for white mold. That's why you'd have to switch which fungicide you're going to use. Now in the past, Topsin has been about the best product. And Topsin is okay, but we've tried it on our farm and you just have to get the timing right and we haven't had as good a response as what we would like. Now, there is a product called Proline that a lot of edible bean producers are using, but if you use a high rate of Proline, the rate that you would need to do a great job on white mold, it can burn the soybeans a little bit. So the other product that there is today is Domark. Now Domark is also sold uh, by a different company as a product called Eminent that's been used in sugar beets for a number of years and it's worked good on a number of diseases there. In soybeans Domark is labeled and it's able to do a pretty good job on sclerotinia white mold out in soybeans. This is something that you don't really know if it's going to be a problem from one year to the next. We hadn't had white mold on our farm for a number of years and all of a sudden boom this year we had just the right conditions where white mold could blow up. So it's something that as soon as we saw some of the white mold I said to Brian man we've got to mark this down on the field maps because we're going to need to watch this for the next 10 or maybe 20 years in these particular fields that there's a lot of sclerotia or seeds for the white mold out in the field and they may be there for many years before we get the right weather for them to just produce white mold like they did this year. So let's say on your farm you get white mold every two or three years and you say boy I just I, I, I want to make sure I don't have a white mold problem. Here is what we would suggest to you. First of all we wouldn't look at Domark as the only fungicide application on your farm. Now it can be if, if that's what you want but what I think we're going to do on our farm at least on some of our acres next year is we're actually going to use two different shots of fungicide. We'll go early like at the R2 stage or full flower stage with something like headline or possibly quadrus. Those products are strobal urines. Then we'll go later on with Domark at probably the R4, which is full pod stage, maybe even the R5 stage where they're starting to fill. So we're gonna go a little later with the Domark. Domark is in the triazol family of fungicides. So we'll be using two different modes of action. So hopefully we don't build disease resistance or anything, but between those two shots, we should control just about every disease that's out there. Now I can hear you already saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here's two more applications I've got to make out in my soybean fields and, and that's really not how we're doing things on our farm because about the same time of year we're looking at different insects out there could potentially even be spraying a late shot of roundup so you could be tank mixing in an insecticide possibly even a herbicide if need be but more likely an insecticide application at the same time well let's talk about that insecticide thing just a little bit if you want to go out there with a pyrethroid something like silencer or warrior capture that should be fine with any of the fungicides you want to use we get a little bit concerned Concerned when you would use Lorsban or Chlorpyrifos and with a late application like what we're talking about with Domark that's about the same timing that we typically will see spider mites in real dry years. So if you go out there and, and you say well I want to make sure I'm stopping my white mold but I also want to get spider mites you can use Lorsban but you are probably going to experience a little more leaf burn than you might like. That's where I might use Capture or Bifenthrin, a generic Bifenthrin product. That would be about your only other choice to stop spider mites. The Capture or Bifenthrin, that is in the pyrethroid family rather than Lorsban, which is in the organophosphate family. That burn that we're talking about with Lorsban and trying to avoid in tank mixes, you'll have to use the same caution if you're thinking of doing some foliar nutrients at that time. There are some blends that do a pretty nice job of not harming the leaves at all, but there are others that do like to put a little bit of burn on. And when you get this late in the season and you've got flowering going on in your soybeans, you want to be real cautious about anything that's going to burn them. Okay, so again with fungicides in soybeans, if you want to go a little on the early side, like at the 
full flower stage with headliner quadris, that's fine. If you want to go just a little bit later and use Domark and try to prevent some white mold problems happening on your farm, that's fine too. You can do both if you want to. The main thing is we want you to focus on return on investment. Don't look so much at the cost. Don't look so much at the yield gain. Look at what is my true return on investment. And if you say, hey, in my area, I'm just not experiencing much return on investment. I've tried fungicides several different years and only gained half a bushel or a bushel. You know, I'd probably shy away from it. On our farm, we have had some pretty consistent gains, two to three bushels. Doesn't sound like a lot, but in terms of return on investment, it's probably three or 400% return on investment. Well, one other thing that provides a very good return on investment year in and year out is weed control. Can you identify this week's weed? 